Hi, this is Tamara. How are you? Happy holidays to you and your family members. So today the topic is going to be about homelessness. Families that are uh, disconnected and uh, family members that are simply lost. Let's just go into prayer. Heavenly Father, God, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we come before you to praise and worship and exalt you, for you are God, and we need you to be in our presence. We need you to walk with us, to guide us, and to be, uh, be the, the light, for you are our Savior, you are our hope, you are joy, you are love, and you are peace. Father, we are coming to you, we, the viewers, are coming to you in your presence to gather on our bended hands and knees crying out to you and thanking you, God, for whatever situation that we are in, that we're praising you because we know with staying with you, we will get stronger and we will get better and we will, we will be able to have a better focus on our uh, life. And therefore, we will be able to withstand the, the, the works that the devil has sent evil things that he sent to attack us and attach itself to us and we'll be able to shake it off because the word of God is strong it's a high tower it's peace it is clothed with righteousness for in you O Lord we can do all things through Christ that strengthens us I'm going to read this scripture to you and you're going to help me along uh, we're going to read Matthew 8 in the King James Version in those days, the multitude being very great and having nothing to eat, Jesus called his disciples unto him and saith unto them, I have compassion on the multitude because they have now been with me three days and have nothing to eat. And if I send them away fasting their own to their own houses, they will faint by the way, for divers of them came from afar. See, Jesus had compassion on the people because he knew that uh, they, was gonna, they wasn't going to last walking home. And I just look at that scripture and I thank the Lord for, for him allowing us to receive that information. And sometimes you walk with God and, and, and you know, you're not going to eat. You're not going to um, have a place to rest. Because uh, you're, you're out there in that street and you are a Christian person. You are still serving the Lord. You are giving your all to God. You're trusting in him. You just came from a soup kitchen. You just came from somebody's house. You just came from, um, you know, asking someone to give you something to eat. And yet, no matter where you travel, you still feel like you're about to faint. You still feel like you're just not going to make it to the to the to the next uh, street, because see what happens is Jesus had compassion on them and he fed them. He fed them first the word of God and then he fed them some food. Now, could you imagine that even though you received the word of God, there's still no food inside of you, but God always seems to manage to get you up and to carry you on he seems to he still seems to manage to to toughen that body that you have and to allow that body to rise up and to continue to walk and he will lead you to where the food is he will guide you to where there is um shelter and then there is uh, uh meat for the day you no know? So you, you just got to stand there and you just have to believe. You, you can't look back. You can't say that God isn't with you. You cannot say that God will not be there for you. There's so many people that walk past the homelessness, homeless people and they refuse to feed them. They refuse to give them some food because they think that everybody who's putting their hands out is only going to do is take it and use it for drugs or are going to drink with it. Or it's just going to, um, you know, gamble it away. But that's not always the case. Some people out there who are, who are doing the right thing, they're trusting in God for their daily meals. They're trusting in God to, to, for them to receive something good for them to eat, something hot, a hot meal. Don't overlook the people on the street. 
It is not up to you to judge on what they're going to do with the money that you've given. What you do unto God, you do it in privacy. You keep that a secret. You give and you bless that money and you just go about your business and you just you just pray. Well, praise God. Don't look back. Now, if the Lord is leading you not to give, then, that's, then so be it. God is God all by himself. We are not the ones to judge and say, well, because I gave to this person, this person should be should have eaten and it should be full. But think about it. How many times do you have eaten three days, three meals in a day, and you still want a snack or you want a fourth meal? And then you just, you know, you drove, driven past many family members who's standing out there in that rain and they have nothing to eat. They have no dry clothes to put on. They have no shoes to change into. They can't even uh, take a shower if they want to. They can't even clean themselves after they've gone to the bathroom on themselves. They have nowhere to go. But Jesus allowed these multitudes to come with him and to travel with him. And you know, he kept them safe. He kept them because he loved them. And when it was time for the multitude to go home, he provided for them. He didn't just send them away and say, go back. No, he sat them down and he communicated with them. And he showed so much love, so much devotion. He didn't turn no one away. Even if those people who did not trust God at that time, or even if those who was not ready to come to God, um, until maybe before the dying day, Jesus still fed them. He did not separate them and he did not judge them because he knew his father up above was the one who's going to do the judging. So if Jesus is greater than us, then why are we judging the people on this earth who you consider weaker? You don't want to be outside of God's will and become a judge yourself. When you start judging people, then you're losing out on the love of God. Now it's becoming heresy, hearsay, and it's, and and uh, you're saying to God, "Oh God, I heard that this person is doing drugs. I heard this person is going to sell her body. I heard this per person is about to gamble the money away." You are not the judge. You are not the one who should make um, a decision. This money that you've earned must go back to God. You are to give your 10% unto the Lord, and that's what you do. Once you give it, it is not for you to turn around and say, can I have it back? Once you give that dollar, $2, $3 to that person who is homeless, you are not to turn around and say, well, I know he's going to for drugs. I don't even know why. I'm wasting my time and my money. It's not your money. It is not for you. It's not yours. It is God's. When I was out there in that street, when I was homeless and I didn't have nowhere to go, God led me from one state to the next. I had about $700 on me and I had two children and I was pregnant with another. And the Lord led me to go from one house to another house and to another house until I was able to to get on my feet. See, no one judged me. They took care of me. Even if they felt sorry for me or they didn't understand my walk, that's not, it was not their concern. So they sheltered me until God said that was enough. Now it's time for you to move on. See, like I said in my last video, all you have to do is just walk with God. If you walking with God, you're going to be closer to him. He's going to set you free because in him, there's freedom. When you start dwelling on what you've done in your past, then you're going to, you're going to keep that chain and wrapped around your ankle or around your neck. You're not going to be free. So you every day, wake up, praise God, walk with him, talk with him, let him guide you. Listen to the Holy spirit. I know. Many of your family members are out there who are sick and who are homeless 
and you know that they're there and you may have seen them but yet you're too embarrassed to pick them up because of their the way that they're looking now under the condition that they look looking and you don't want your family members to notice that you have more family mother, members out there who is homeless so you rather walk past them and you know that that's the wrong thing to do God puts it in your spirit to tell you go give them a hug go out there and tell them that I am with them go out there and give them something to eat it's nothing wrong with telling them that you still care for them that you still remember the good days that you remember all the, the, the um you wish that these, some, these days would be better you know under certain circumstances I know that you can't invite your family members back to the house but you can go and fellowship with them you can go and sit with them you can go and um, help them get something to eat put a couple of dollars in their pocket go out there and get some of your best clothing and and hand it to to your sisters or to your aunts or to your cousins or you know even to your mother because there's some mothers that's out there that that is homeless I mean she's made a un, um, she's made decisions to stay out there but you could go visit her you know where she's gonna be at you go and you pray with her you give her the scriptures you give her the word of God you sing to her you just talk with her and if she doesn't want to do any of that you just sit with her you don't even have to speak just sit just sit just hold her hand just sit fellowshipping is good you know it warms the soul when you can see a familiar face and you know that one of these days is gonna get better one of these days she's gonna turn her life over to Christ one of these days she's going to she's gonna lead other people to God see that dollar that you have given away it was never yours it was always God's you can do this you have the strength and the capacity to be able to withstand those snares of the devil when the devil comes to you and he starts telling you to quickly walk past this person you have that will and that strength to turn around and say I got to go back and tell them that Jesus loves you if that's all you have then do that if you don't want to go back there then stand where you are and scream at the top of your lungs and say Jesus loves you it's not too late for you to walk with him it is not too late for you to 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 have a uh, more than what you're having now if some people want to stay out in the street they don't want to come back home but then there's nothing wrong with that this is who they are is God gonna make them come back into our house no but God knows who his children is you don't make the decision and say oh he looks dirty he looks so filthy that I know he's not going to heaven because if he was going to heaven, God would have gotten him out of that state long time ago. Now you're judging. You're putting yourself as a judge. God knows who his people is. You do not make a decision and talk for them. You are not an advocate for them. You are just there to comfort them and to give them hope and guidance and give them some resources you could be a resource sit with them talk with them laugh with them I mean my, some of them are so funny so funny to where you can't even believe that they are in this situation that they're in but when the laughter dies out and it dies down and you start to hear this story you realize that they are human and everybody has a story to tell so you need to love God love people love your family members love the homeless don't kick the animals out in the street and laugh at them and throw things at them because they belong to God as well God hears you he sees you and he knows you what makes you think that he doesn't see them hear them or know them you are a blessing and you are designed by God to love others share your story and your comment with me below and um, like and subscribe so here goes my ring today for my paparazzi 
And I just want to let you know, you know, being a homeless person, you know, we we got we we have we will get up, you know, we we will get up because as you're sitting down there, I can hold your hand, and then we could get up, and we can stand for God, and we can pray, and we can worship, and we can fellowship. Don't leave your brothers and sisters behind because they're human. You know, this world is passing away. Fellowship with them, it's like fellowshipping with the Lord. But if the Lord leads you not to say anything, don't be foolish enough to go over there and say, I have to do this. You have to be led by the Holy Spirit because you may not be strong enough to talk to that person. That person may not be ready to talk. That person may not be ready to sing. That person may not be ready to uh, to fellowship at all. So be wise. Be wise. Like and subscribe my page. Oh yes, I forgot to tell you before I do that. We're going to be playing, praying for Michael Flint Sr. His, he and his family um, is in need of help. Um, he is concerned for his family's belongings and a place to stay. Um, they just got evicted from their place. So, like I said, once again, homelessness is real, and we all know that, and we all see that. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you right now to take care of uh, Marshall um, Flint Sr. and his family. Please give them a place to live, a place that they could call their own. Even if they go into a shelter, let it be temporary. If they stay in a family's house, let it be temporary. Because, Lord, nobody wants to come from their own house and to go into another house and, and burden that person down. Even if they make it work, I'm pretty sure he wants his own house. He wants what belongs to him. He's entitled to what belongs to him. But what, whatever state of mind that he's in, let him rejoice, let him praise, let him worship, let him accept that God is God. Let him know that Jesus fed the multitude. That Jesus took care of them. He gave them the word of God first. And after many days, after three days later, he fed them food. And then he told them, if I didn't feed them food, then some of them came from so far away that they would have passed out. And that would have been a horrible testimony unto the Lord thy God. So, Father, we're going to extend our hands to a Marshall Flint Sr. That his family will be well and that they will be off that street and that they will they, and they acknowledge that one day they're going to have their own again. They acknowledge that one day they will be able to close their door and call because you gave them a place to live and that they will not turn their back on anyone else who's out there in that street. Whether it's raining, cold, it could be a nice spring day. It doesn't matter. It could be 70 degrees or 72 degrees where the weather's perfect. It doesn't matter. People are human. They still want to have their own. And if they do, they just have to walk with you and trust you and believe in you and stay with you and stay with you longer than three days and just love you and surrender everything that they have to you. Because without you, there is nothing. Well, the love of God is strong. The word of God is stronger. And we are believing and the message that God has given us. We are your servants. And we thank you for allowing us. To have a roof over our heads. To have food in our belly. And to have clean clothes. Take a shower. Brush our teeth. Have accessibility. To be able to use our wheelchairs. You know. To just, to just be in a house that's ours. If those who doesn't can't even walk but they have their hands to praise they can use their hands to praise you and they and they can just you know get on the phone and call other family members and tell them how much they love them and pray with them and, and worship 
No, we have a nice warm place right now. But tomorrow's not promised. Tomorrow could be us. Tomorrow it could be us. So today we praise you. Today we exalt you. Today we thank you for the roof over our heads, meals in our stomach, and money to give. We delight in your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now you go ahead and you read that Mark 8. Continue to read and bless the Lord and share the message of joy. And don't forget the homeless and the animals as well. In Jesus' name. Like and subscribe. I have my ring on. It's paparazzi. And uh, and I and I, I'll look forward to hearing from you. Comment below. God bless. Bye.